Okay, so we've got our beautiful landscape and we've got our um, weird 70s cowboy riding a buffalo. And we're going to try to bring these two things together as a uh, video collage in 360 VR video. Um, now, if you were in my class in physical space before uh, we had to change to distance learning, you might remember my undying love for uh, the VR plane to sphere effect. Um, but for anybody who doesn't remember me talking about this in class or uh, is joining us from the world of YouTube, um, let me uh, show you why this matters. So if I have a piece of flat video in a 360 composition and I just try to move it around like in the normal way you would in Premiere using um, the motion setting and changing position. That works so long as I stay on the um, equator, so to speak, of the 3D sphere that we're inside. But as soon as I begin to move this thing up or down, as it approaches the poles, uh, it gets sucked into <laughs> a wormhole never to return. And this is all because of that um, equirectangular um, projection that Premiere works with. So we can't deal with the position or even really scale or rotation properties of the video in and of itself. Um, instead, um, we're going to use this VR plane to sphere effect. So I'm going to throw that clip back on um, unaltered because it's really important for VR plane to sphere to work that none of this stuff is changed from its default. Um, so we're going to just leave this stuff alone and never ever touch it. <laughs> and instead we're going to go down to effects and in the search you can start typing VR and then you'll literally get all of the VR effects that Adobe has. Um, we're going to grab plane to sphere and throw it on this Buffalo Rider clip. And all of a sudden it's not curved anymore. It's not like it's been pasted on the inside of a cylinder. Now it looks more like um, a TV screen, you know, a, a projection or something is just stuck right there in the world. Um, so it's fixed the geometry for us already. And if we want to change scale, like make this thing bigger or smaller in an effort to sort of make it appear like it's closer or further from the viewer's um, eye. You can use the scale under VR plane to sphere to do that instead of this scale. Remember, never ever touch motion once we're working with flat video in, um, in VR. Do it all through VR plane to sphere. In fact, you can even just twirl that close so you don't get <laughs> um, tempted. So then uh, scale is an easy one. Feather is another one that's kind of nice um, for our purposes, though we can do more than this um, with matting. But for now, um, just feathering the edges a little bit can already take this away from the sense that we just stuck a TV screen in the middle of our, um, our beautiful vista. And now we've got this um, much more portal like um, image that that collages better that heals with the environment um, and then the real powerhouse inside VR plane to sphere is under uh, rotate projection rotate source is also interesting um, maybe a little more niche use but I'll show you what this all does um, so when we twirl open rotate projection you can change where this image is in all directions um, and uh, X, Y, and Z. And what's great about this is if you remember a second ago when I was showing you that trying to move images up into the North Pole will get them kind of lost into that, um, into that abyss, this doesn't do that anymore. You know, you can put this image anywhere inside the VR sphere and um, by turning it around and around we are able to um, to move it any which way. So if I bring this around this way, I'm going to try to create the illusion 
that our dude is actually riding this <laughs> buffalo um, on this hill, right? And I mean, don't even worry about trying to create a, a truly photorealistic experience here in this project. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of having some fun with, with what sort of um, artistic collage-like realities you can create um, using the combination of uh, 360 background and um, flat uh, standard video on top. Um, but even just with that level of simplicity, we're already kind of getting somewhere. Um, I think the next steps that we would probably take are to change the shape of our mat here. And, um, and then maybe in this case to do some color work here to make this more yellow uh, and a little less blue. And all of a sudden you'd have a, a vaguely convincing um, man riding a buffalo down this hill. Okay, now I did promise that we would look at what Rotate Source is capable of as well. Um, this is where you get into kind of like faux 3D effects. Um, right now, uh, this image is sort of flat, so to speak, on our background. But if you rotate the source image, you're able to create the somewhat convincing illusion that um, this screen, as it were, is tilted in relationship to the viewer's eye. So if you're trying to convince us um, that that something is uh, flattened, you know, against the um, against the background or is, you know, an, at an oblique angle to us, um, this is a powerful tool. The other really important thing to remember about all of these is that each individual one of these is keyframable. Um, so that means we could, over the course of this image, animate its position so that he appears not only to go down the hill in his, um, in his window, but that we could also be kind of moving him across our hill too. Um, and, uh, and so let me show you how to do that. We're going to create a, um, on projection pan Y axis, we're going to hit this toggle animation button. that I think is meant to look a little like a stopwatch. And that gives us our first keyframe over here on this timeline. Um, I'm going to move to the end of my clip. And now I don't do that anymore because that's a toggle that'll take the animation away. Now I go to this little diamond shaped button here, the add and remove keyframe button, and that gives me the next keyframe. Now the arrow is next to it. Let me jump from keyframe to keyframe directly. And in the first one, I'll leave it where it is. And in the second one, I'll just move this a little bit that way. Yeah, there. And now our collaged window will slowly tween, you know, it'll animate the in-between frames um, so that it uh, gets from keyframe to keyframe over that time. So, okay, we've got this. But um, like I said, the feathering in uh, VR Plane to Sphere leaves something to be desired. I feel like when I turn it all the way up to 100, it's just barely starting to get to where I would want it to be at, at like 1. Um, so this, for me, is not enough, and we're going to have to take more control of that. And you might initially think, oh, okay, well, I'll like use a mask on this effect. But if you do, suddenly your clip goes away and you have to think about like, okay, what does the mask actually do in Premiere? It's masking out which parts of the clip get the effect or not. 
So <laughs> these parts of the clip are not getting the VR plane to sphere effect anymore. So that's not actually what we want to do. And then if you were to just try to do it with um, a mask on, say, the opacity or something like that, then you get back into the problem. It's completely disappeared, you know. Um, you get back into the problem that I mentioned earlier of if you mess with any of the fundamental um, properties of the clip before it's made into a VR plane to sphere, um, then things get screwy. <laughs> and any of the other effects that you might think could help, like, oh, well, I'll, I'll throw some kind of cropping on it or the edge feather effect or whatever after um, VR plane to sphere, um, you just start to mess up the geometry playing with flat video in um, VR. And most things will either just make it disappear or they will do the opposite of what you want it to do or they'll undo the VR plane to sphere effect. Um, so the thing that I've found to be the most successful is to just nest the entire thing in a sequence um, and then do pl VR plane to sphere to that nested sequence. So let me show you what I mean. Um, if you right click on um, this clip, the Buffalo Rider clip in my case, and choose nest, it's going to ask me to name this sequence. Um, and I'll call it uh, Buffalo Rider um, Hill. And then I've already done this once, so you can see it here, Buffalo Rider Hill 1, but I'll call this Buffalo Rider Hill 2 just for the heck of it. And you'll see this changes to a green clip, which is an entire sequence nested in um, into this sequence, our Buffalo sequence. Um, so what that means for us right now is that this clip no longer has VR plane to sphere on it. Um, the other one does. And uh, if we start trying to mess with the masking on this clip, it still has the same problem that I described a moment ago. Um, so we're going to flip this around and do it in the opposite way. Okay. So um, I'm going to pop open the Buffalo Rider Hill 2 nested sequence that I just made. Um, and instead of making it a VR sequence, I'm going to change its sequence settings to match the original video, this Buffalo Rider video. So this is just 720 by 480 standard def, and it's not equirectangular. Um, so cool. So far, so good. The other problem is that we don't actually want plane to sphere on this. We want it on the nested sequence inside our actual composition. Um, so I'm going to copy this clip, control C, jump into Buffalo and right click paste attributes and just paste the VR plane to sphere stuff that we just did um, onto this and then delete it from this clip. So do you follow that? What I've just done now is make a sequence that only has this video under its normal um, sequence settings, you know, its normal properties. And it that sequence then is put into our main sequence and the nested sequence is what gets the VR plane to sphere with its um, keyframes and everything. So this is going to allow us to do um, masking on this footage without it screwing up the geometry we've created here. Um, so you can do masks uh, either as ellipses or four point polygons or as a free draw. Um, and I'm going to do the free draw just because it's, um, it's maybe the most organic or amorphous um, of the mats. So you basically make points. You can um, click and drag the second point in that sort of uh, pen tool vector style to make curves, or you can just click to make um, more polygonal masks. 
and um, ultimately you want to get back to the beginning to close this off and this can be um, pushed in one direction or another to be altered whatever so that for better or for worse is our mask oh and do you see those vcr controls on the mask path attribute of the um, mask we're making you can change masks frame by frame in premiere um, so while that could be fussy work um, it's actually really awesome to do uh, a really custom mask as someone moves across a frame it allows us to um, adjust for the fact that maybe his head will get cropped or something at one point in this animation we can just expand the mask for those particular frames um, and then this thing can be feathered to a degree that is um, perhaps more uh, satisfying than the feathering in VR plane to sphere. So between mask expansion and mask feather, I'm gonna try to find something that I like. And then when I pop back into this sequence and view it in VR, now I've got a much more kind of amorphous, um, significantly less rectilinear and obvious collage element. Now this thing, um, especially if I'm looking all around in a headset and I see that coming, you know, out of the corner of my eye, I'm just like, oh, that's just like part of the landscape, right? Um, and uh, indeed, if I throw a color effect on that, Maybe now I have something I can start to work with.